he hates me today, so my camera doesn't seem to be working, but I'm, no problem. I'm here, I promise. Um, Paul, are you OK to put our slides on? Thank you. I'm going to, um, as, as Ian said, I'm Vicky Mannion. I'm the Domestic Abuse Local Partnership Board's rep for Early Health and Prevention um, with responsibility for the Domestic Abuse Service. So I'm going to give you a very quick whistle top stop tour of the service, the local picture and sort of how assessments and referral pathways are used. We do have a very quick lived experience of a harmed person as well who access support. So it just helps to offer some sort of context to the, to the work that's being done in the service. Um, if we could just move on to the next slide, please, Paula. So this is an overview of the service. Um, we're a confidential service for males and females affected by domestic abuse. Um, we have um, 11 full-time equivalent independent domestic violence advisors. We also have responsibility for the Gateway Recovery Groups, which is our survivor programme. Um, we facilitate the MARAC alongside the police and we also have a weekly risk assessment meeting where we look at um, individuals who don't always quite meet the threshold for MARAC, but there are concerns and we have a multi-agency response to that as well. Um, can we move on, please, Paula? OK, so let's have a look at the local picture. So this chart demonstrates the referral rates to the domestic abuse service for our 65 years and over population. Um, it's been broken down into male and female harmed people. Um, so as you can see, compared to the population, the figures are very low and lower still in respect of all the requests for support to the domestic abuse service. As all referrals make up 54.6 per 10,000 of the population, so our over 65 referral rates are very, very low in relation to the national picture, in relation to the overall. Um, can we just move on to the next slide? So what do we know? Um, so there's a clear reduction in requests for support for, um, for the older a person gets. There was a reduction of around 85% in the number of referrals made if you're over 80 and live in the Cheshire West area. Um, if you're a harmed person aged over 65 referred into the domestic abuse service, you're more likely to be referred by the police or a GP. You're more likely to be considered to be at medium risk of harm and be more at risk of being harmed by an adult child. You're more likely to be a carer or a cared for person. Um, carer stress and um, carer fatigue is quite a common feature in referrals. You're more likely to be isolated. Um, many of the referrals received um, for harmed people in our area reside in our rural communities. Alcohol is a common feature in referrals made. And you, you're more likely to have been in a relationship for a very long time and present with different views and values to relationships and marriage. Divorce and separation is often not a consideration. Um, adult children have usually left home or are now living back with you due to their own relationship breakdowns, adding additional pressures. You're less likely to refer yourself for support. And anecdotally, what we see across the service are there are themes like they feel like they're a burden to the service and, and don't qualify or they, they shouldn't need this support. Just move on, Paula. So how do we do it? So what we say is don't be afraid to ask the question. Talking about domestic abuse can be quite challenging, um, but it's important to ask those in questions um, and using motivational interviewing skills and open ended questions. Um, I think it doesn't always have to be a straight in answer around. Are you being abused by your partner? It's how are things with your partner? What's your relationship like? Tell me about it. You don't seem yourself lately. I was wondering if something's wrong, can I help? And I think it very much goes into what Clive was just talking about around people asking, asking how are you and asking if you're okay. So the Dash RIC is the tool that's used to assess domestic abuse in, in, in Cheshire West. Um, the questions are yes and no answers. So we would encourage um, anybody to ask beyond the questions. For example, the first question is, are you very frightened? Well, what does that actually mean for somebody? So what we try and encourage is people to use motivational interviewing techniques to ask beyond the question. So we would be encouraging um, what does being frightened feel like for you? Can you tell me what it means for you to be frightened? How often do you feel frightened? Because in, in relation to looking at risk, somebody who's frightened every minute of every day is different on the continuum of risk to somebody who may be frightened a lot less than that. So it's around asking beyond the yes, no question on the, on the assessment. 
sort of as discussed in um, Hannah's brilliant presentation, the group discussions, the DASHRIC um, asks questions that are unlikely to be appropriate for older people, such as, are you pregnant? But this is the tool we're working with at the moment while development work goes on. Um, so we have to make the harm, we have to make it work for the harmed person, not put them into the boxes. Um, so consideration could be given to elements that might affect um, such as how they may be asked about the question. So it could be that the so the question, for example, is are you, are you pregnant? But they could be um, a grandparent and that pregnancy is going to add, add additional risk to that family or it may change the family dynamic, which might increase the risk. Includes questions over child contact. So as an older person, you might provide childcare and your adult child is abusive. So what we always try and suggest is the tool is a guide and on the back of the our ways of working trauma informed responses work that's been undertaken in Cheshire West. As a service, we've looked and added open ended question prompts to the DASHRIC and um, to support practitioners to ask beyond the questions. Um, we'd like to stress that the DASHRIC score is not a given and you, and you can and should use professional judgment. If you're concerned, the harmed person may not accept or understand the risk or maybe minimising or in actually being coerced to answer questions in a certain way, you can offer a view regarding the risks as you see it. But things to sort of remember are, you know that you may know this person really well. Consider body language, expressions in your answers, his or her shoulders may be slumped, there was no eye contact, they were fidgety, uncomfortable, they may pick at their nails, um, you can add narrative to the DASHRIC. So whilst you may not answer the, why you might answer no, that might reduce the scoring. You can add additional information that demonstrates risk. Sadly, it's not very common um, to have commentary on DASH risk assessments, but it's all a really good DASH risk assessment when it comes through, has quotes, it has what people have said, it has what um, we want you to say what you see. I, I want to, as a manager of this service, I want to be able to read a dash rick and, and this this person is screaming off the page because I know lots of information about them because what's been shared. And what we'd say as well is trust your gut, you're usually right. You can't apologise and um, you can, sorry, you can apologise later if you're wrong or you've made assumptions for that person. But what you can't do is be sorry for not taking the opportunity to keep somebody safe. Um, so I'm going to invite... Um, Vicky Coates is one of my colleagues. She's going to um, read out a case study of a lady called Marie. Um, Marie accessed our service and, um, and she's 72. So I'll hand you over to Vicky. Thanks, Vicky. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about Marie's story. I worked with Marie earlier this year and I think it really clearly highlights some of the things that Vicky has been talking about there with the barriers and complexities that people face. Um, so we received a referral from Marie from the primary care as she disclosed long term emotional and physical abuse which appeared to be impacting on her mental health and well-being to the point which she had suicidal thoughts which she had almost put into action. Marie indicated the abuse was getting worse and it appeared she wished to separate from her partner who she'd been married to for over 40 years and shared three adult children and several grandchildren. Marie and her husband lived in a small Cheshire village in the family home they had owned all their married life. This was and held a lot of memories for Marie and her children growing up. Marie had come to the attention of DAPES on previous occasions four years prior when talking to hospital staff. The IDFA went to visit her, but she declined any ongoing support at this time. Marie described to her IDFA that many of her friends had passed away or were much less mobile these days, so she didn't see many people from day to day. They had downsized to a one car and she wasn't as confident driving recently. She explained her children lived in other parts of the country and she only saw them on special occasions, one of which was coming up that weekend as it was a granddaughter's birthday. She then went on to say that her husband had caused an argument with their daughter over the phone last night, so they were no longer coming to over to see them. She hadn't seen them for over 12 months due to the pandemic and became upset when discussing this with the advert. Marie didn't feel able to talk to her family about the relationship. She felt a lot of guilt that they had lived through it as children and that they now had their own lives and she didn't want to make them part of her worries. Marie had recently been in hospital due to a stroke and was still recovering. 
However, she explained how her husband was also in ill health and she had to care for him on a daily basis by ensuring he had his medication and she would be the one responsible for cooking and cleaning at home. She described it as always being this way, as it was her role as his wife. Marie, however, didn't feel she had the strength to do this all alone anymore, but he offered no help. She didn't feel she had the strength to leave the relationship either, as she was unwell still and struggling day to day. Marie also felt that her husband's medical condition added to his behaviour, as he was much worse when he was in pain and would take this out on her verbally. The IDVA discussed a referral to adult social care, which Marie accepted quite reluctantly, but was very clear that her husband was not to know anything she had disclosed and felt that when the support was offered, he would decline it and that the process wouldn't help. The risk identification checklist that was completed with Marie came out as a medium and it became clear that Marie didn't want to leave the relationship currently, but also that she didn't know her options if she wished to do so in the future. The IDVA talked through housing options and made sure that she had a number for the emergency duty homeless team, as previously Marie had slept in a car one evening following an argument as she had nowhere else to go. The IDVA talked about safety planning and areas of the home that may increase risk. During this, Marie explained that her husband knows she is scared of the stairs due to being frail, so she always tried to avoid arguing near these. Marie had become an expert in managing her own safety and had strategies in place. The IDVA was able to enhance these and discuss some practical things she could do, such as taking copies of her legal documents in case she needed them. Marie spoke to the IDFA on four occasions and stated that she felt better for knowing that people exist who can help if she needs it. To know she can have emergency housing or speak to a GP confidentially was a big comfort to her. Marie felt better talking about a situation and for being believed. She said it felt good to know this wasn't her fault and although she didn't feel she wanted to leave, she knew that she could do in the future. Marie said she had lived her life and just wanted peace in her later years and didn't want to walk away from all she had built up as she was comfortable. She didn't want to leave her husband to fend for himself as she didn't think he'd manage. Marie also said that she felt a burden to the IDVA as her situation wasn't that bad and she knows that other people may need the help more. Marie was reassured several times that this was not the case, that services will always want to support her, she is always able to ask for help and she will always be believed and be treated with respect as she deserves to live a life free from fear and emotional harm. Thank you. Thanks Vicky. Um, I mean, I think that um, I think that case study and, and the work that was completed with Marie sort of gives a, a, a clear picture, really, of of how our older people feel in relationships and how how they want to be supported. But what it did strike us, and this is quite common, and um, with with um, with the support that we offer to to people um, who who are older, is that they weren't aware of the support and what was available. And um, so it's as as partners, how can we do that? How can we get that awareness out there? And how can we encourage people to access service when they need it? OK, so what's next for um, Cheshire West? So um, it was alluded to earlier around Cheshire East's additional um, questions for the um, for the Dash RIC. Um, so we've been um, invited to do some um, work with Cheshire East so we can make sure that there's a consistent approach to the to the dash rick across Cheshire East and West, which is which is really exciting. Um, we've um, got a community based project and um, is currently being implemented whereby older people support will be a priority and engagement with, and consultation with community resources, charitable and voluntary sectors. But for us, it's really imperative that we have an authentic voice on board with, with this and that we look to consult with our potential customers around what they want, what they need, what that looks like for them. So I would welcome the support of you all really to sort of um, help us with that journey a little bit and, and get that support right initially. Um, I was at an event recently where um, older people were captured in the hard to reach um, bracket and a discussion regarding this is around, um, is this the case or as services are we hard to access um, rather than them be hard to reach? Um, and this will be very much a focus for the service and project development. Um, the service will continue to engage and collaborate with adult social care to ensure there's a culture of engagement and awareness of domestic abuse. It's, um, it's really positive that relationships have really strengthened between the domestic abuse service and adult social care over the last um, 18 months and domestic abuse 
this consultation is regularly requested for high risk meetings and panels, which is really positive. Just move on to the next slide, please, Paula. So this is the um, the threshold criteria for support from the Domestic Abuse Intervention and Prevention Service. So the harmed person must be over 16. Anybody under 16, um, the service considers to be a safeguarding issue and would be addressed by our children's services. A high risk referral is determined by the DASH RIC. Um, any self referral, so that's really important. Please encourage people to ring us if they need support. Any Irish referral, which is identification of risk to improve safety, which is our GP pathway. We're very lucky to be commissioned by the CCG to run this um, to run this project. It has a very different feel um, to, to domestic abuse support. It's very holistic. We're usually involved for longer and we do get more referrals for our older population through this pathway. Um, by the police, any medium risk incident, that's the third in 12 months. And any person that is supported by the IDVA are Countess of Chester Hospital, where we've got an IDVA based. Next one, please, Paula. So this is the referral pathway. Um, so criteria is met on the and the dash rick is completed, and that's the link to our online referral form. Um, but what I would really want to stress, and while I've got a very captive audience, is that we are a really supportive service and you know if people aren't sure they want advice and guidance you know we do have duty advice who can offer advice um, and support people to make them um, to make the right decisions around referral pathways so please use us and um, next slide please and they're just some useful resources that we um that we support people um to access um for any further information, open the door, Cheshire, and um, really good service. Um, it offers the whole across the whole of Cheshire um, for services and also for people who consider themselves like they might be harming people as well. So it's not just um, for people who are harmed. OK, I think that was my last slide. Sorry, sorry for the delay, Vic. I was just trying to unmute. Thank you so much to you and your colleague for that. That was uh, that was really powerful. Uh, again, another.